Disclaimer, I am not sponsored by nor am I affiliated with any of the companies mentioned in this video. All opinions represented are mine and mine alone. They do not represent anyone besides myself. Your opinions may differ. That's okay. Try this stuff out yourself in order to find out if it works for you. Hi everyone, it's me, Krista. Welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. If not, welcome for the very first time to my little art corner here on YouTube. Today we're going to be doing an Art Snacks unboxing. It's going to be the April box. Normally I do my Sketchbox one first because I typically get that one first, but unfortunately I have not received my Sketchbox one for April quite yet. I got an email saying that it was delivered, but I need to check with the post office because I have not received it. As soon as I figure that out, that Sketchbox video will be a coming. But for right now, we have our Art Snacks one, so let's get to it. As always, we get our cute little Art Snacks logo sticker. This time it is green with a little black design on it. The snack for this month is Laffy Taffy. I got cherry. You get these boxes. What flavor did you get? I also have the little menu that comes in every box that gives a description of what we have inside. The very first item that came in this month's box is the Cron Diosh Luminant 6901 color pencil. I got it in a blue. I know I complained a lot last month about their graphite pencils being so much money, but I actually really like their colored pencils. I bought the white because it's one of the more opaque ones I've ever used. I mean, the retail for this is $540. i have definitely seen them on websites such as Utrecht and Jerry's Artorama for about 2 to $3, so that's always an option for you if you like it and you want to get it, but you don't feel like spending $6 on a colored pencil. Introducing the most light fast permanent colored pencil ever made, the Cron Diosh Luminance 6901. It's very subtle, velvety effect stems from two years of technical research. The high pigments concentration results in intense bright color with strong coverage and mixing capacity. Next we have the Zebra Sensations Double Ended Brush Pen. From super fine lines to Big, bold strokes, the Zebra Sensations double-ended brush pen offers amazing versatility. Achieve di diverse lettering or illustration styles with two different felt tips on this pen. Fine and medium. Waterproof pigment ink flows from both ends, delivering lush black color. The flexible brush nibs have excellent bounce and deliver consistent ink flow, responding to changes in pressure with ease. This guy is $5. And that right there is the medium size of the nib. Looks like it has a pretty good shape. It seems fairly stiff. It doesn't seem super flexible. It doesn't really seem like much of a brush nib to me. It just seems like a bullet nib. But either way, that's kind of cool. Looks like it might work pretty well. We'll find out when we start our project. And there's our other side. It is definitely thinner, similar shape. Also doesn't feel very flexible when I touch it, but you know, when you use it, it might do it a little differently. And yeah, it's not super fine, but it is smaller than the other side. Now we have the Iron Lac Pump Action Paint Marker in seven millimeters. This one's normally $5.55. And it's, it's orange, it's very orange. So I've got orange and I have blue. They're definitely complementary colors. I'm going to figure out exactly what would be the best way to do this later. But uh, it does come vacuum sealed, which is good since it is a paint marker. That way, if it does happen to leak in shipment, it's at least a contained leak. And this one is a staff favorite. Pump up your artwork with the Iron Lac Pump Action Paint Marker. This flexible tool can tackle a variety of surfaces from fabric to skateboard decks to glass to everything in between. The custom designed valve system allows for controlled output, ensuring a clean application every time. It's also refillable and the nib is replaceable so you can keep it working for a lifetime. That is cool. I do like it when you can refill it. That's one of the reasons I like Copics is because they're refillable markers, even though you spend more to begin with. You can buy ink later and it lasts way longer. So very cool. 
you can see, there's a pretty good sized chisel nib, and we are just going to shake it. I'm just going to use some cardboard because it says it could go on anything. Plus, this way, if I get too much out, it's not as big of a deal. Oh, we got it coming slowly. Might just have to shake it a little bit more and then pump it a little bit more. <laughs> I'm pushing too hard. I just broke through the cardboard. This is why we're doing this. More shaking. Half of this video might just be me shaking this. I'm sorry in advance. There we go. So we got it kind of pumped a little bit. It's definitely more of a yellow based orange. It looks like it's pretty sheer too. It doesn't look super thick. But we got it working at least a little bit. And I am actually going to set this upside down just to help it get better use. Okay, this is actually kind of too funny. This is the uh, Pentel Orenz one-click mechanical pencil. <laughs> $8.95 retail price. Uh, I got one of these in the January sketchbox, and the one I got did not come in with lead. There is a video about that whole box, and I wasn't actually able to use the pencil since there was no lead inside of it. I know a lot of people were thinking that I was stupid, or that I did not know how to use a mechanical pencil, or that I for some reason just lied about not getting lead for some reason. I don't know why anyone would do that. I mean, I'm sure there are people who do, because people are crazy and do crazy things, but uh, maybe I'll get to try this pencil this time. I will also say I appreciate that there is not a lot of paperwork saying how to use the pencil because I read it on camera and it was a lot of stuff and in all caps and it made me feel uncomfortable <laughs> and condescended too. But you will see. Maybe I am stupid. Maybe I just can't get let out of the pencil. We'll find out. But uh like I said, this is $8.95 retail. This pencil is a one-click wonder with a special super sliding sleeve, trademarked. You only need to click once to extend the lead to start writing. The sleeve prevents even the finest lead from breaking. Do not extend the lead past the metal tip. It'll write without you actually seeing the lead. It's preloaded with B lead which is super strong and produces clear, dark lines. Okay. One click, that would be one. That is technically the metal sleeve. So we did one click, just one, because it's not supposed to extend past that. Hey, look, it can write and do things. I'm sorry it's super, like, not focused right now. But, like, you can see at least an indication that it is doing something. That's amazing. It's nice that I have blood and that it does indeed work in one click. Sorry, I'm very emotional about this because the last time I had one of these. The Sketchbox one was a 0.2 millimeters. This one's 0.3, so there's a 0.1 millimeter difference. I'm happy I get to use it in a project. This, this is the project, we're done now, just kidding. Not the most aesthetically pleasing of setups, but these are the items that we got in this month's box, minus the Laffy Taffy, because I ate it, because it's a snack and that's what happens. I eat them pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna go over pricing really quick again and see if everything is worth it. The Caron de Osh pencil is normally $5.40. The Zebra Dual Ended Brush is normally $5. The iron lac marker is normally $5.55, and this pencil is normally $9. $8.95, but we're rounding it up to $9. 
So all that added together is twenty four ninety. So in the US, that is twenty four dollars. I do not think that that includes shipping and it's twenty four dollars if you do it month by month. Obviously, if you pay like months in advance, like three to six to a year, you obviously save more money if you pay up front. But this one's a little bit worth it. Saving a dollar. Not the biggest of deals, but you're saving some money. And before we start the project, I need to share the joke of the month, which is how do artists stay clean? They draw a bath. For the paper, I am again using the Stonehenge Aqua Hot Frost. It is a watercolor paper that is smooth. It is 5x7. I like using it because it seems to be a pretty sturdy paper and it's smooth, so you can get some pretty good effects on it. For this project, I had an idea of drawing a guy and doing it mostly in blue and then using that orange marker as kind of a halo circle behind his head. It does evolve a little bit as I do it, because as I think I've said in previous videos, I kind of have a loose plan usually, but it changes slightly, like little things get moved around. I will say, now that I have actually gotten to use this pencil, I actually ended up liking it quite a bit. The lead did not break on me once, the only thing is obviously you have to push it out a little bit more as it goes. That's just what happens. And I'm using the pencil right now just for mostly the outline. There is a mistake that I make that I noticed a little bit later, and it's about the placement of the shoulder. And I didn't, I literally didn't even notice it till I was done that uh, with the pose, the shoulder placement is just a little off with how I did it. Not sure why I didn't notice it while I was working on it, but hey, it happens. I also wanted to draw the profile in the opposite way of how I normally do. I wanted it to be facing my right hand because I'm right handed. It's one of my weaknesses that typically if I have it facing my dominant hand that it's not as strong as a face and apparently this is a pretty common problem for a lot of people. <laughs> is that if you draw a profile and it happens to be facing your dominant hands that it just tends to be a weaker face generally it's, i'm sure it has something to do with the placement of the hand or something along those lines but i'm intentionally working on it trying to prove that skill a little bit I also tried to cheat by using different circular items to get a perfect circle around the head and it ends up not working, so it eh, ends up being a little wonky, but it works, it works. Because I wanted it to be a certain size around his head. I was trying my best to kind of keep that as much as possible, but it kept getting a little bigger because of the marker. I also lose that beautiful Adam's apple that I drew out because I decided kind of on a whim to just continue that line through with the orange marker. I guess I wanted to decapitate him a little bit. I don't know. I thought it was a nice little addition. I do like this marker. Uh, like I said before, when I was testing it out and getting it pumping, it is a little sheerer than I thought it would be. It looks pretty opaque right now. But it doesn't cover quite as well as I would normally expect, like an acrylic paint marker, too. It also dried a little bit rougher than I thought it would as well. And here you see me adding on to that circle and it becoming less circular as I'm trying to improve the line around it. Oops. I love this colored pencil. It's a beautiful shade of blue. You don't have to apply a lot of pressure for it to be kind of a smooth, thick layer going on, which is awesome. There's also no waxy buildup or anything like that that you can occasionally get with colored pencils. I just, it's super pigmented. Love it. Want more. 
when I was working on this, I was kind of having flashbacks too because I end up using uh, the black marker directly over the colored pencil, and it reminded me of when I was in middle school and early high school, how I would uh, copy certain comic book panels with a uh, Crayola colored pencils and then using Sharpies over it. I upgraded to Prismacolor after a while when I was in high school, and then I would put the Sharpie over it still. There's just something really nostalgic about it because it's a technique I used to use a lot and then using it again, especially because it's not something I really do now. I don't typically use marker on top of colored pencil now. It's just nice to revisit that and have those memories. There's specifically Batgirl comic books if anybody cares. That... <laughs> And because we are only using the items that came in the box, and I didn't really want to use the orange on the face too, because I was worried it would get muddy, it is going to be very monochromatic with the blue and then the black, and then I do use the graphite pencil over it again. And by graphite pencil, I mean that mechanical pencil. And pretty soon I start using that black marker to do outlines. I do start with the finer tip and then switch to the medium tip in order to thicken up some lines. I also use it to turn that white background black. The marker was pretty good at the beginning. It seemed like when I would switch it over to the thick tip, even before I started doing the background, it started getting a little scratchy. And by scratchy, I mean that the ink flow seemed to stagnate, like it got dry. And that was before I even touched the background. It was just after I got some lines going. It could just be that when you want to use a specific tip of this marker that you might want to let it set and let gravity kind of do the work and make the ink flow towards that. Because I know sometimes with dual ended markers that can become an issue where it seems to settle more towards one side or the other. I am really happy that I got the blue with the black because I think that they play really well together, the blue colored pencil with that marker. You will also see later that I put the colored pencil over the black background to kind of see how it layers. It shows up pretty well on there and I will try to point it out when we get to that part. And for the shading on this, I wanted it to be super dramatic. I guess I wanted that kind of comic book feel, especially that older comic book feel where you have the super dramatic shading and it's just straight black. Also, I think it makes sense if I was kind of pretending that the orange circle is kind of a light source going on. I'm also bringing in that mechanical pencil to get some of the midtones going, so I have a little bit more of a gray, just to soften the transition slightly between the blue and the black. I do like this box better than the past two Art Snacks boxes I've gotten. The one for February didn't make any sense to me with the items they curated together. It just it didn't work. And last month's box, I didn't care for getting the two graphite pencils. I wanted an extra item, and the fact that there wasn't a brush in it was kind of meh. This one, I feel like all the items play together really well. I like the different effects you can get because you can put that colored pencil on first, you can put it over the paint marker, and then the black marker, as you can see right now, you can get a nice deep indigo blue by layering that blue over the black. And I'm sure regardless of what color you got, you could still do it that way. There's just a lot of ways you can go with this box and I actually really enjoyed this one a lot. But yeah, we're getting towards the end of this video here. If you liked it, please hit that like button. If you want to see more monthly Art Snacks box videos, please hit that subscribe button. I upload one once a month. I also do Sketchbox ones. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, or feelings, please leave them in that comment section down below. I definitely want to hear from you. Please also let me know if you got orange and blue in your box and if you got something different. Tell me. Tell me what you did with this box. Tell me how you felt about the stuff inside. I want to keep the conversation going. Please talk to me. 
but I'm going to be heading out. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I will be talking to you soon. Bye!